curved monitors, they're still a relatively new concept. I mean, sure, you've probably heard about them in videos like ours or read about them on review sites, but how many of you have actually seen one in person? And how many of you have actually used one? You know what? These are great questions. Leave a comment below with your answer. Have you used or even seen in person a curved monitor? I have. Imagine for a moment if we were able to collect all of your comments from before the introduction. What a great world that would be. Too bad we can't. But we can look at the Steam hardware survey for a relatively useful somewhat snapshot. An overwhelming 34% of all Steam users are on 1920 by 1080 resolution. In fact, only 1% of users are on 1440p, while 0.0% are using 4K. A staggering, well, staggeringly small, 0.21% of users are using an ultra-wide resolution, so it's safe to say that uh, not many people out there are using a curved monitor for gaming, since that would be a fraction of that fraction of what is already a fraction. I mean, technically anything's a fraction. One is a fraction. One over one. Anyway, let's say you are shopping for a curved monitor, though. After all, Anthony thinks that a 34-inch curved ultra-wide monitor is basically the best gaming experience you can have at the moment. So are all monitors monitors curved equally? No. We are here to teach you all about the curve. It's just a dance. It's like, do the curve. Do the curve. It's not a dance, it's a monitor. So we've got two examples here today. The BenQ XR3501 and the Samsung SE501C. They're both curved monitors, but other than that, they couldn't be any more different from one another. The 35-inch BenQ has a 2000R rating. Well, the 24-inch Samsung has a 4,000R rating. So what does that actually mean? Is bigger better? Well, we'll need some basic elementary school geometry to explain this one, actually. If you look at a curved monitor from the top and extended it, if you extrapolated it, you would eventually get a circle. As we all know, a circle has a radius R, which measures the distance between the center to the outside. The curvature rating for a monitor is similar, where a smaller number means a smaller radius or a tighter curve. So what can we actually do with this information? Well, not that much, unfortunately. The curvature of the monitor that is optimal is actually directly related to the size of the screen. So you can only really use this number to compare the experience that you'll have with two monitors of pretty much the same size. So there is no R value that's perfect for everyone in every situation. For example, if you were to get a 24-inch monitor, then, well, the curve doesn't really make much of a difference on that anyway, because the edges of the screen are all pretty much the same distance from your eyes anyhow, which is supposed to be one of the benefits. But if you were going to get, you know, a super wide monitor like this one, then depending on whether you're planning to sit really close, you might want a tighter curve. Depending on if you're going to sit further away, you might want less of a tight curve. Or if you're planning to share the screen with someone else sitting next to you, same thing. You might not want to have such a narrow sweet spot. So... Yeah, that's pretty much it. You kind of have to try it. The good news is that most of the NCIX locations do have curved screens on display, so definitely drop by for a visit if you're in the market or if you just want to see a curved monitor in person. They're not people, they're just monitors. In person is a figure of speech. Uh, one final tidbit of information. You can use the curvature of the monitor to determine how many monitors you would need to make a full circle of monitors. Yes, this is completely impractical, but it's still fun math nonetheless. So let's use the BenQ, for example. It has a physical width of 853 millimeters, a curvature of 2,000 R, use the formula for circumference, we get 2 times 2,000 times pi, which equals 12,566 millimeters. Divide that by 853, you get a grand total of 14.73 monitors. You're going to have to chop one of those off a little bit on the early side. Hopefully that panel doesn't break too bad. If we do the same math with the smaller and the less curved Samsung, we would need 46 monitors. So, um, BenQ. Or Samsung. You guys want to lend us, like, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 46 monitors to do, like, a, you know, 360-degree gaming setup?
Yeah? No? No? Didn't think so. All right, well, guys, thank you for watching. Leave a comment below if you'd like that pipe dream to happen. Otherwise, leave a comment and let us know any other things about curved monitors that you want us to know. Be sure to like the video and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. And, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe if we could convince Anthony to spend his own money, we could try a full circle of monitors. Maybe leave a, leave a like if you think that's a good idea. No, my wallet. Laying the smack down on your wallet. Ba -ba